Our mission was to prove or disprove that the Barberton area held the origins of life. Who better to ask than geologists, professors and twin brothers Richard and Morris Fulyun, who began working in this region in the 1960s. We're in a, a very special place as far as we're concerned. It's the southern part of the uh, Barberton Mountains, mountain land, and through it runs the Kamati River, which you can see in the background. And to the right of the river, you'll notice some hills, and if you look carefully, you'll see some lines on those hills. Those lines are the lines of a number of very ancient lava flows. But these are not normal lavas. These are very unusual lavas. They were first identified uh, in this area and they are called Komatiites after the Komati River and they represent um, some of the first uh, lavas erupted onto the planet. Uh, their age is about 3.5 billion years and they are pretty unique and they've been found now in all the ancient um, continental areas of the earth. The Barberton Mountain offers the perfect opportunity to go back to the beginning of Earth's history the rocks hold the key to understanding early life. One finds a black, uh, what we call a carbonaceous uh, silica-rich rock called a chert, which I'm holding here. And it's in these rocks, which are older than 3.5 billion years, that um, scientists have now found signs of primitive life. Pretty close to the origin of life, we believe. And for this reason, and these chirts are f fairly common in parts of the Barberton Belt. For this reason, Barberton has been called the cradle of life. That is why. Because of the uh, life forms, which are similar to present-day bacteria and algae, that have been found in them. Even in the 1960s, NASA knew that these might very well be the oldest rocks on the planet. The Barberton Mountain is a treasure trove of geological history that reveals much about the formation of Earth as we know it. So in the background, um, we, we, we see a large granite dome. And that granite dome belongs to a suite of granites, which, um, were, which are dated at about 3.3 billion years. And they were the first granitic rocks to intrude the essentially Kamatiite-dominated early oceanic type crust of, on the Earth. So they're intrusive into the 3.5 billion year old Kamadiites and they contain xenoliths or inclusions of the Kamadiite. They're full of these inclusions of Kamadiitic material and it's an unequivocal intrusive relationship. Um, the granites are essentially quite distinctive. They're light in color. They're composed of uh, sodium rich feldspar mineral, um, a translucent mineral quartz and also mica, bi generally mi biotite mica and they're generally fairly easily eroded or weathered. However, they do form these distinctive domes, whaleback domes of the type we've mentioned due to the exfoliation and also spheroidal weathering, which are classically developed on these domes, also called monoliths, if they're just one big single dome. When these rocks in Barberton were formed, the entire earth was covered in water. These rocks were formed by underwater volcanic eruptions. Another interesting Kamati formation are these magnesium-rich rocks that resemble tombstones. What we're looking at here in the background is this somewhat sheared rock, very magnesium-rich Kamatiite basalt, very high in magnesium, and it tends to shear and to give rise to a very distinctive kind of weathering, which is called tombstone-type weathering, which you can see very clearly in the background here. And to demonstrate the rock, it's a very light, greenish gray colored rock which you can see over here and um, to show how soft it is this is a geological hammer if I scratch you can actually scratch it very easily because of the, mag the soft magnesium minerals that uh, have formed in this in this basalt so this type of rock forms the upper part of the Kamati formation very magnesium rich basalts Kamatiite basalts with a very distinctive composition as well after a long day of giving us a tour of the Barberton area, the brothers went on a tour of their own to discover more about the famous gold mining in the area. 
Galaxy Gold Mine was bought on auction in 2008 and we started with mining production um, halfway through 2009. So this mine has a small scale operation and um, it's privately owned by a consortium of uh, friends from the Johannesburg area. So what we're going to be doing is we're going into a mine that's dated 130 years old this year. It's the Pioneer Mine. It was the first mine that was discovered in the Barberton district and gold was actually discovered here in 1871 by a gentleman with the name of Thomas McLachlan who came through to Barberton and then founded gold and then later on in 1882 French Bob Augustus Roubaix came through this creek that we see over here and then he found alluvial gold and eventually which led him to reef gold. 150 meters into the mountain, the aim of the tour is to give visitors an idea of early mining practices, but the Falun brothers were naturally more interested in the rock formations. Scientists believe these rocks are one of the oldest and best preserved volcanic sedimentary series in the world. Empirical evidence that makes Barberton home to some of the planet's oldest known rocks where early life was formed, a quest fulfilled. The Barberton Macondra mountain land is truly unique, containing the oldest and best preserved sequence of volcanic and sedimentary rocks on Earth. They have provided an unparalleled source of scientific information on the formation of the early Earth from 3.6 billion years ago. Joining me now is Professor Terence McCarthy from Wits University. Professor, thank you so much for joining us. Now, thank I got very so excited uh, earlier this week when one of my producers said they had a rock at my desk. I immediately thought diamonds, and this is what I found, mm. but uh, I'm told this is over three and a half billion years old. What would a rock like this actually tell us about the Earth? Well, you know, you can't, a rock is uh, to all of us just a lump of hard stuff, but in actual fact, a rock is like a time capsule because when it forms, every rock has got an age, it forms at a particular time. And when it forms, it, 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 caps, it captures information about the world that it forms in and the processes that give rise to it. So by learning to understand the way rocks form and being able to read the message that they contain, we can actually deduce quite a lot about the world in the past. So it's like, it's like a time machine actually, rocks in our, enable us to go back in time. And the Barberton is particularly important because as you said in your introduction, it's the, it's the best preserved of the oldest sequence of rocks in the world. There are older rocks in the world. Um, there are, uh, the oldest rock in the world that's, been, that's known, actual rock, is about 4,200 million years from, from northern Canada. Um, but that's just a boring lump of rock, no particular interest in it. Then there's some rather interesting sedimentary rocks in Greenland, uh, mm -hmm. not a particularly large amount, but uh, they are about 3,800 million years, and they are very, very important in the whole history of life and story of life and story of Earth. And then Barberton. Barberton is the, of, the, of the oldest rocks, uh, the really old rocks, over 3,000 million Barberton is the best preserved. But how do you get to quantify that number? How do you know that a rock is 3.6 right. billion uh, years old? That's a very good question. So what, when a rock forms, particularly a rock that forms from a, for a lava, for example, from a volcano, it pours out of the volcano, and um, it's, it starts out life as a completely molten state. And as it solidifies, it forms little grains of what we call minerals, little chemical compounds. And uh, some of those minerals trap inside them uh, small amounts of, of atoms that are radioactive. And these then decay. So when it forms, it sets the clock at zero. And then over time, the radioactivity, uh, radioactivity causes, for example, uranium to change into lead. So we come along today, we isolate these little grains, we measure the amount of lead that's accumulated, because they didn't have any lead to begin with and how much uranium is left, and from that we know the rate of the way, the rate at which it changes, we can work out the age. Let's look at the potential of the relationship between geology and tourism, and whether we're doing enough in South Africa to bring the two together. Well, we, we probably aren't. You know, this, this, the Barberton um, uh, Trail is, is, is a wonderful new departure, new venture really, uh, because it's, it's bringing to life and bringing to the public attention these fantastic geological things that we have in South Africa. But um, it's just as we have the most amazing geological history preserved here, probably better than anywhere else in the world. Because we go from Barberton, 3,600 3, million years. Um, we have the whole story of um, preserved in our rocks. We have almost continuous rock formation going back to 3,600 million years. So we've got the most incredible story of early life, of the way the Earth has evolved from its very primitive state. Um, um, right through to the development of, um, of um, the atmosphere, free oxygen in the atmosphere, we have that story preserved here, right through to 
the development of uh, 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 more advanced life forms and origin of, um, of dinosaurs, the origin of mammals, and of course right through to the origin of man, you know, ourselves, yeah. our species in the cradle of humankind. So we have a record the, of geological and, and paleontological and fossil record that is unparalleled anywhere in the world, absolutely anywhere. This is unique. But there are very few um, trails that have been uh, created specifically to show this to the public, to in interested people. And the Barberton is the first one that's really important. Um, and one can only hope that there are more because there's an amazing amount to see in South Africa. I mean, when we were chatting earlier, both you and I um, have realized that we both haven't been on the Barberton Trail. That's correct. Um, but there is immense opportunity in terms of tourism potential that uh, the Barberton Trail and, and others can attract. Absolutely. What do you think uh, needs to be done to ensure that we're attracting people to these sites? Well, I think uh, the important thing is for people to be aware of them and, um, and for the geological profession, basically, to create the, 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 the vehicles to, 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 to popularize and to uh, you know, put it in a, in a way that can be understood. We've tried to do this on a country squad scale, not as a tour that with this book here, Story of Earth and Life. There's another very nice book um, uh, called Geological Journeys, which is, uh, it describes the geology along uh, various highways mm. in South Africa. That's a, a really interesting read for people who want, you know, sort of roadside geology. Um, and then, of course, the Pilansberg has been uh, quite well documented, but they've sort of isolated little patches. Barberton is now well documented, but there are lots of other potentially interesting places. You know, the Drakensberg would be wonderful. Mm. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about the books, and then uh, again, in a quick conversation that we heard earlier, you were you had me enthralled talking about how the the Earth's surface moves, so that we have continents and oceans. Tell me a little bit more about uh, what are you hoping to achieve with these two publications. Well, you know, these publications are really just to explain the wonders of uh, of, of the, the geological environment to um, to the world at large. You know, to, they, they they're not technical books; they're written uh, for the general reader, and they are they they we try to make things as simple as possible with cutting out all the scientific jargon and just telling the story because it's a fantastic story. Um, and you know, the the rocks themselves are revealing the most amazing things. For example, let me tell you a little bit about Barberton. Um, as a case in point. You know, the world was very different then, and we've learned this from the rocks. For example, atmospheric pressure was, uh, pre atmospheric pressure on Earth today is about, is one bar. One bar, right? Okay. Atmospheric pressure in the time those rocks at Barberton, which you see on the trail formed, was somewhere between 30 and 90 bars. Uh, that's equivalent to the depth of 300, between 300 and 900 meters underwater. It's an environment that would crush a submarine. Submarines can't go to those depths. The atmospheric pressure was amazing. Um, there was probably, the moon was much, much closer. So the moon, the full moon would have almost filled the night sky. More romantic the moon evenings. Is, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the moon has steadily been spiraling away from the Earth. The, uh, the day length was only about 14 hours. Um, the temperature of Earth, we're not sure. The sun was much dimmer, but the Earth was quite warm because it probably never had ice caps because right. it was of the greenhouse effect. And this was an environment which would, you would, a, a human being, if we went back in time into that environment, you wouldn't last a second. It would just kill you. Uh, but there were bacteria living then, and they preserved in fossils, in a, in a, like, um, like for wood fossilized, you know, they get, um, they get um, preserved in silica. And uh, we see those at Barberton, the incredibly ancient bacteria. It was the most advanced life form in those days. And that bacteria was steadily working its way to modify the world into the world we see today. So let so me have my rock back those, because that it's whole clearly story more valuable than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> that story is, is encapsulated in the rocks at Barberton, that very, very early chapter of the Earth. And you know, at that stage, the Earth was under serious bombardment from space. There were these massive asteroids that were colliding with and showering debris all over the planet, right. you know. And we see the layers that they formed uh, in the rocks at Barberton. It's absolutely amazing. Professor, thank you so much uh, for that beautiful narrative and uh, your insights today. Of course, that was Professor Terence McCarthy, and uh, he has shared with me that this three and a half billion year old rock possibly could be worth a couple of millions in a few years. So I'll be holding on to this baby for much longer.